a standard kind of um, secular history textbook called, I think it was a World History, uh, that uh, the French Revolution and other uh, uh, revolutions were about uh, ending clerical privileges. And I often wonder, what were these privileges that they're talking about? Well, apparently, uh, the liberal definition of clerical privileges is the right to exist, the right to... <laughs> the right to own property, the right to, uh, to organize schools. Um, the mantra of liberals in the uh, 19th century, of course, and particularly from Cavoir in Italy, was a free church and a free state. There would be separation of church and state, and the, uh, the government would neither um, subsidize nor uh, control the Catholic Church, it would, and uh, it would permit uh, complete uh, religious pluralism and freedom of religion for all. Yet this was never the case. Whenever liberals came to power, a free church and a free state meant the uh, suppression or expulsion of religious orders. It meant the seizure of church property. It meant the confiscation or closing of Catholic schools. It meant uh, uh, various um, uh, prohibitions on clerical dress. Um, it meant um, uh, the exile of religious leaders. Uh, it meant um, uh, attempts to um, uh, sever all connection between the local church and the Holy See. Consider for a moment uh, the fruits of liberalism in the 18th century. Um, uh, the first fruit, of course, was the expulsion of the Society of Jesus from so many uh, countries, Spain, uh, France, Naples, uh, Portugal, uh, the murder of a very popular um, uh, Catholic priest in, uh, in Portugal, and of course, pressure on the, um, on the Holy See to, that culminated in the 1773 suppression of the Society of Jesus. This, of course, was followed by the French Revolution, which um, uh, by some measure perhaps uh, was responsible for the death of 1.2 million innocent people, in which there was wholesale slaughter of Catholic priests, nuns, and religious. Uh, Stalin made his bones as a uh, um, Leninist revolution, the Bolshevik revolutionary under Lenin, uh, during the, um, uh, the Civil War the, in Russia, where uh, one of the tactics he employed is he would take uh, white Russian officers, he would put them on a barge, chain them together, and then sink the barge. It was more economical than shooting them. Uh, it was, uh, uh, this is something he learned from the French revolutionaries. Uh, they would do this with Catholic priests. So, and these, of course, are the people that proclaimed liberty of conscience. Um, and, of course, the first act, one of the first acts of the French Revolution, even while the monarchy still existed, was, of course, the civil constitution of the clergy, which essentially uh, meant that the uh, revolutionaries would uh, effectively seize control of the state. Now, in fairness, um, under the Concordat of 1515, the, crown had, uh, the French crown had already largely controlled the appointments uh, to the church, uh, but this case was even more revolutionary. It would allow the election of local, uh, of local uh, pastors and parish priests and would effectively sever all connection with the Holy See. Again, this was done in the name of liberty. Um, uh, the restoration, by the way, by the way, speaking of Jefferson, um, Jefferson thought Louis XVI actually was a rather good king. But he, but he despised Napoleon, and the reason he despised Napoleon was, of course, the Concordat, was that Napoleon had restored the, uh, the church in 1801. But anyways, um, this goes on all throughout uh, the history of Europe in the 19th century, the history of Latin America in the 19th century. Um, one of the things people, perhaps Catholics, don't realize is that, um, do you know three archbishops of Paris were murdered in the 19th century? The first was murdered in the, in the uprising of 1830, the Revolution of 1830. The second was murdered in the uprising of the Revolution of 1848. And the third, Archbishop Darboy, who was one of the fathers of Vatican I, he was an inopportunist, by the way, Vatican I, was one of the hostages executed in the Paris Commune in uh, 1871. So this, of course, again, uh, by, the, um, by the, uh, the heralds and the, um, and the, um, uh, the champions of liberty. In, uh, in Spain, it was the same way. Uh, whenever an anti-clerical government came in, we had brief fits of anti-clericalism in Belgium. Um, in, I think, Switzerland to this day, the Society of Jesus is still prohibited. Uh, in Latin America, we saw, of course, uh, um, uh, you know, Bolivar was a, was a Freemason. Uh, many of the regimes that came into power after the, um, the Spanish were expelled were essentially Masonic. In Mexico, um, we saw perhaps the most prolonged and enduring and, um, and, um, and vehement uh, example of anti-clericalism. Um, it, uh, a complete break in relations between Mexico and the Holy See. Um, again, a prohibition on ecclesiastical dress in public places, a complete confiscation of all church property. And um, um, basically Catholics, um, uh, anyone who was a practicing Catholic, uh, denied uh, the opportunity to serve in any position of authority in government. In France, in the Third Republic, not a single practicing Catholic uh, served as a cabinet minister from 1879 to 1940, 61 years. 
Savoyard Italy was the same way uh, after the, uh, uh, the um, uh, Cavour had died in 1861 before the seizure, of the final seizure of the Papal States, but under his successors uh, it was the same. Crispy, uh, the famous um, anti-clerical um, uh, Prime Minister of Italy said we must, uh, we must destroy the Catholic Church. And um, uh, this went on, of course, in, in every single country where liberalism came to the fore. So again, uh, we see the, essentially the hypocrisy of liberalism, that it claims, to be, um, it claims to be for liberty, it claims to be for freedom of conscience, but in fact um, is an engine of persecution towards the Catholic faith. Now, in its modern phase, uh, it's become even more uh, authoritarian and totalitarian. And by the way, we certainly should realize that uh, liberalism, uh, when we speak of liberalism, we also include socialism and, and, and Marxism, uh, because they're both material, they're all materialist in origin, and one uh, really proceeds from the other. We should also remember the words of, of Pope Pius XI in Quadragesimo Anno, who said that the uh, socialism which now pervades culture and morality um, is, the, um, uh, the, uh, is, the, is the child of liberalism and the, its heir will be Bolshevism. So liberal capitalism is the parent of, of socialism and it's the grandfather of communism. Uh, yet now we have something that even in some cases the communists did not do with the modern phase of liberalism, uh, which is driven to some extent by um, um, uh, this uh, Luciferian desire to um, kill innocent children and by um, this um, uh, uh, agenda of, um, of, of those who practice sodomy and uh, wish to impose that uh, regime on the rest of society. Uh, even the Bolsheviks didn't attempt uh, to um, uh, completely uh, normalize uh, unnatural sexual acts. By the way, the Bolsheviks did uh, legalize abortion. The first Western country to legalize abortion was the Soviet Union in 1921. The second Western country to legalize abortion was Nazi Germany in 1933. So this is the pedigree of Planned Parenthood. And of course, uh, as we know, um, uh, the, uh, the original founders of Planned Parenthood were, of course, all eugenicists and who, and who admired uh, the eugenics program of, uh, of National Socialist Germany.